quick video giving you two options on specifying your next computer. One that's a little higher end and one that's a bit more budget friendly and it takes into consideration all the software we need as architects and CG artists. Let's get into it. Right, so my favorite website for specifying a computer is PC Specialist. There are many others out there, just give it a Google. You can just type in like, you know, PC Builder. And what these guys do is they give you the ability to specify your parts without running the risk of trying to put it together yourself. I, I wouldn't dream of doing something like that. Um, <clears throat> so what I've clicked on is configure a custom PC. And the purpose of this video is to give you two options. And this is just my advice. Um, and what I'm going to try and do is just keep it broad to a certain extent um, because people have preferences on whether they're going to go for Intel, AMD in terms of processors and graphics cards and all that sort of stuff. So I'm just going to do two options, one that's higher end and one that's a little more budget friendly but still will perform well. My preference when it comes to the overall um, selection of these two is AMD. And we're going to start with the higher end one. And that brings me to the Threadripper Pro, which is, even in, even the name tells you that it's, uh, <laughs> it's absolutely rapid. Now, you could go bonkers with a 64 core, but that's just getting silly in terms of price. So I, I would actually just keep it to the entry-level one because th there isn't really such a thing as, as entry-level here. Um, so I would just say go for the base-level Threadripper can't go wrong with a with a Threadripper Pro. Very, very good. Um, pick whatever case. Obviously, you've only got a few options there. And, and again, what these guys do is they filter their cases to suit the your selections, basically. So um, let's just go for the, the next one in. Motherboard, there's, there's a you know there's a few things that I would just keep it because again, they only give these guys are only giving you options based on what is compatible with the, the, the kind of the headline selection that we've made. So I wouldn't I wouldn't add money there. I would just keep keep it as it is. Memory though is incredibly important. I would go for a minimum of 120 gig. That handles well RAM you know contributes to all, all programs. But even just you know simpler things like loading stuff into Photoshop and stuff, the more RAM you've got, the quicker it'll it'll react. Um, and you never want to run out of RAM because that causes all kinds of crashes and stuff as well. Now, graphics card, right? The graphics card in, in this day and age of real-time renders, your graphics card is arguably the most important selection. And it appears to me that the NVIDIA RTX range has the best compatibility with the software that we use as architects. So if we're going for higher end, I would recommend the absolute bad boy, which is the 4090. You could, if you wanted, go to last seasons. Now it doesn't look like it's giving me the option there. What's the highest one it's giving me? So say 3070 Ti, that's still a good card. That'll probably feature in the in the more budget friendly one. So let's go for the, the bad boy there and you won't miss a beat when it comes to the, the that processor and that graphics card. You're onto an absolute winner. Now I know that's expensive, but you can get it on finance as well. And you know, if you own your own company, there are certain uh, tax write-offs for equipment and all that sort of stuff. And you know what? You might even work at a very friendly company where you can ask them to buy you this, but that, that, I imagine that's, that's extremely rare. Um, don't need a sef second graphics card, in, in, in my opinion. Um, hard drive, you want to go solid state. That's pretty much just industry standard now. Um, less moving parts. And I would say a minimum of one terabyte, but I'd be, you know, I'd be tempted to go for two terabytes. And course A is the the weapon of choice in in my experience. And then for the second hard drive, it doesn't have to be solid state to keep the um, the price down. You could just go for another terabyte. 
um, which just gives you that just additional storage really. Then you don't really need uh, external hard drives, lots of stuff. You do want a memory card reader. Um, a lot of us architects are amateur photographers, so that that always comes in handy. You'd be amazed. The power supply is an interesting one because the bigger the graphics cards are getting, the more power that they require. So my advice would actually be to go for a, a minimum of a thousand watt power supply to future proof your machine if you want to swap out the um, you want to swap out the graphics card. Power cable fine. Cooling is also important. Uh, again, for the we'll, we'll look on a higher end at the minute. I would go for the top processor cooling option. I would go for the improved thermal conductivity as well when it comes to the thermal paste. LED lighting, that's just a, a bit fancy. Um, you probably would go for extra fans as well, actually. Because you, you, you know, keeping the machine cool is is absolutely imperative. The, 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 you shouldn't really need wireless because you know a computer like this should be hardwired in, and everything else is just operating system and all that sort of stuff. And for now, we're not we're not talking monitors, and we're just talking um, the stack. And the great thing about these guys is they give you all kinds of warranty levels, and you can speed up the delivery, the build process, and all that sort of stuff. Absolutely fantastic, and for a little laugh, if it wasn't expensive enough, why not? Uh, why not order two? Um, but just to recap on this one, these this top area really. Oh, sorry, I, I, and the solid state hard drive. Apologies, but that should be standard. Really, go for two terabyte solid state. The key thing here is your processor wants to be very powerful because that leaves you the opportunity of using the likes of Corona Render and V-Ray Render and all that sort of stuff. And a good processor is just great all round for obviously processing tasks. You want a good amount of RAM, minimum 128, and you want a really good graphics card, again, to deal with all the 3D modeling programs and the real-time rendering programs. So that's the... That's a little summary for the higher end one. If we go back to the stars, AMD again. Now, what what I like when I'm going for something a little more budget friendly is the Ryzen processor. I'm just trying to distinguish between these two. Let's just go for that one. Now you can see straight away that our start and price is a lot more reasonable. And our finance as well option is a lot more reasonable. So <clears throat> again, choose whatever case you like. And you see the way the list has got longer now because um, we've gone for you know, slightly lower end parts, if you like, so there's a bit more room for the type of case. So as we move down the list, let's pick the most powerful processor out of that option because it's still got 16 cores that will result in it normally in 32 buckets when it comes to the rendering. They're, they're normally double threaded. And that is plenty when it comes to uh, rendering with a, a V Ray and a Corona and stuff like that. Um, memory, as I've said, minimum 128. The graphics card, I would still stick to the, um, the RTX range. Now, you have got a bit of an option. <clears throat> you could go last season's. Uh, 3070 Ti, that's, that, that is a very good graphics card, that'll do you a really good service, and the cost is still staying pretty reasonable. Or you could go the new series, and the price hasn't leaped there, and that, but, and, but there has been a really big leap when it comes to the graphics card technology. So I would actually say, let's keep it to a 4070. What does the Ti do? Yeah, so just keep it to 4070. So that's got 12 gig of its own memory inside it, which is very important. That's called VRAM. And again, that's just when it's when it's processing real-time render scenes, when it's rendering and all that sort of stuff, you know, the likes of Lumion, Twin Motion, Unreal Engine. But with it being the 40 series, it's the latest tech. So it's not as powerful as the 4090, of course, 
but it's still utilizing the latest tech so you'll still feel a big benefit and we're still keeping it in the low 2000 ranges <clears throat> solid state drive i would then actually go for one gig in the solid state and one gig in your normal old school hard drive then as i said memory card reader is useful don't need an external anything like that power supply you probably don't need maybe you know what i'll probably cap it at say one uh, the 850 just again keep cost sensible and if we're keeping it budget friendly i think that's about right cooling again i would i would go for something liquid cooling is it's very interesting it's very effective so maybe just go for the lower of the liquid coolers don't need to mess with the thermal paste for this one extra fans i would go for maybe another couple of the ultra quiet and it's it's barely affected the price we don't need wi-fi and anything like that and everything else is os as we've as we've said so that would be my option for a more budget-friendly one, but that would still save you massively in all the software that you need, and it would last for years as well. So quick video of that, but hope it's been very useful, and I get a lot of messages about this, so I can now point everyone to, to this video. Thanks for watching.